Hi guys, welcome to the last night of the marathon launch of the Rope of Hope. I will be on tomorrow with an episode. Our normal schedule is going to be on Sundays, but we have done a week long launch. Tonight is episode 10 this week. And I have the beautiful Miss Constance Fields with me. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for inviting me on. I'm excited to talk about this. Of course, of course. Now, would you take a moment and just kind of tell everybody who you are and what you do for anybody who doesn't know? Of course. Uh, my name is Constance Fields. I'm an actor. I'm also in my final year of a master's in clinical mental health counseling program at the, at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. And um, I just love inspiring people, being inspired, being around artists and people who use their talents and their gifts for the greater good, because uh, that's who I am. And I love inspiring people to be the same. Nice. Well, our topic tonight is actually a, one that is, you know, I think near to a lot of people, whether they want to really talk about it or not. And we're going to talk about your experience with cancer, colon cancer to be specific. Mm -hmm. um, so I am kind of going to let you take the reins at this point and share your experience. All right. Well, let's see. 2017 was a really busy year for me, acting wise. I had a lot of amazing opportunities, um, but also a lot of anxiety with those opportunities because I suffer from imposter syndrome or I'm recovering from imposter syndrome. And I was attributing my stomach pains to the stress of, of those experiences. Also my day job at the time was so stressful. And so I was always complaining about how my stomach was hurting. I was constantly having bowel movements, maybe two or three times a day, which, you know, for somebody who's used to just doing it once a day, that was often. <clears throat> well, um, around the summertime of 2017, we were moving to another city. So we had to sell our house. And during that time, it was pretty stressful. Uh, I went to the bathroom and I'll never forget it. I wiped and there was blood and it was like period blood. And uh, I, I was not on my period <laughs> and it was a my rectum. <laughs> and so I called out to my husband and he came down and, uh, or he came to the bathroom and, you know, he was like, well, maybe you just need more fiber in your diet. You know, maybe you just need more fiber. And me, you know, I, I not wanting to think it was anything serious. I was like, yeah, I just need more fiber in my diet. <laughs> right. you know? uh, we're not in the medical field, but whatever. Um, so for probably another, I don't know, two weeks, I let that continue. And the bleeding subsided. It was just, you know, a little bit here and there, but the pain stayed the same. And finally, one of my friends was like, Constance, girl, go to the doctor. Like, this has been going on for how long? <laughs> go to the doctor. So I went to the doctor and she did a rectal exam. And um, she set me up for what's called a flexible sigmoidoscopy. But Constance didn't want to have any kind of procedure because <laughs> anything like that <laughs> freaks me out. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll set it up for a time when I know we're actually not going to be in the city because we're moving. <laughs> and then I could cancel it. And then, that, you know, that'd be the end of it. <clears throat> so um, in between all of that, uh, during the course of us planning to move, I had been trying to get a job. My husband had already gotten a job. So that was why we were moving. But I hadn't. And I must have applied to... 20 jobs nobody contacted me for an interview except for one and that was a colon and rectal surgery center ironic <laughs> <laughs> and, and so they called me for an interview and um, probably within like 20 minutes they offered me the job so me not connecting the two at all i was just happy that i had a job 
you know, we're moving, we sold our house, I got a job, everything's gonna be great. But while I was preparing to start this position, there was probably a, w- a week and a half that I wasn't working. The pain got worse mm. and the bleeding got worse. And sometimes it would be bleeding without a bowel movement. Like I would just think I was having a bowel movement and there would just be blood in the toilet. So I was like, okay, something's wrong. <laughs> like something's really wrong. I knew something was wrong, but not something that was really, really wrong. And um, I, I would have moments where I would just feel like somebody was stabbing me in the stomach. I would collapse, uh, climbing the stairs because we had a townhouse. And so I finally got up the nerve to talk to the doctor that I was scheduling for. At the time, I was a surgery scheduler. And he agreed to see me as a patient. And pretty soon during that exam, he was like, okay, I'm going to have you do a colonoscopy. And I don't know if anybody who's watching this knows, but your colon is shaped like this, like a upside down U. And so the colonoscopy is designed to check the whole colon. And the procedure that I canceled would only check the sigmoid part of the colon, which if, if this is your rectum down here, the sigmoid part is like right about there. Okay. And then the colon continues. So I agreed, Um, it was probably around October uh, at this point, late October, and I had just turned 34. And um, I had the colonoscopy. Excuse me. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I had the colonoscopy and um, I'll I'll never forget it. The the doctor um, came into the recovery room or recovery area. And he said, as I was coming out of anesthesia, mind you, this is horrible bedside manner, in my opinion. But he said, we found a tumor in your colon. You're going to have to have surgery to have it removed. And I was like, what? What? Like, I I, I said, was it cancerous? And, And he said, he turned to the nurse and he goes, explain this to her when she comes to. And then he left. And so the nurse was there <laughs> like, it's okay, it's gonna be okay, you know, um, the, just, you know, change up your diet, you know, and you'll have this surgery and it'll be fine. And she prayed with me. And then I had to wait to have the surgery. Um, what was interesting is that where they found the tumor was in the splenic flexure of my colon. And it was, I know I'm speaking Greek, but it was like way up here. Mm -hmm. And so if I had had the flexible sigmoidoscopy only, it wouldn't have caught the tumor. So um, do you have any questions? (laughs) No, I keep going. I've had a colonoscopy. Oh, okay. So you know. So I I get what you're saying, but I love that you are explaining this for anybody who has not yeah. gone through a colonoscopy. And you know what? Real quick, why don't we explain what the colonoscopy actually is mm-hmm. for anybody who has not been through it? Sure. Do so, you want to take that one or do you I'll, want me I'll to take, take that one? I'll take it. <laughs> Um, basically, a uh, colonoscopy is a really, really easy routine procedure that you should start getting probably around 50, but they're lowering the age now to somewhere in the 40s, especially for uh, minority communities. Um, I know that uh, a lot of a lot of attention has been placed on colon cancer with the passing of Chadwick Bozeman you know, and and everything that he went through when he was young. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of people really didn't approach the topic with open arms, but now I think people are starting to. But basically you get cleaned out, your doctor will prescribe you a prep. Um, It could be over the counter or it could be a prescription. And that's the worst part. You're going to be pooping a lot <laughs> You're going to get cleaned out. Yes, uh, yes, yes, you will. 
Uh, but then you get under a light sedation usually, unless you need um, something a little stronger. And they go in with a scope and they check your whole colon with a camera and they make sure that everything is fine. And then that's it. You come to, and then you find out whether or not you know you need further workup, or if you're good for another ten years, or five years, you know, <laughs> however long. So, um, you know, during that time, I couldn't understand why I was going through this because they were telling me, okay, well, we found this tumor. We're just going to do a colon resection which is where they cut a part of your colon and then they stitch it back together. You, you likely won't have to have chemo, but we don't know. So, you know, be prepared for that. But um, I was trying to understand why at 33 slash 34, I was going through this, you know, like I've heard of people having breast cancer at early ages. But I had not heard of people young like me getting colon cancer. And so um, it wasn't something that had really run in my family. My grandfather, he uh, passed away of brain cancer, but it originated in his colon. But um, other than him, no one else had had colon cancer. And so there was a really interesting time, and I feel like I don't know, um, you know, who, whoever's watching what your faith is, but I'm a strong believer that God is, you know, working behind the scenes on our behalf and um, everything that happens in our lives are for a reason. And so this whole stream of events was orchestrated for my healing, um, me getting the job there like them hiring me mm -hmm. in 20 minutes after i had canceled that procedure you know <laughs> excuse me so um i i had spoken to kimberly about this um last week but there was a period of time when i was constantly touching the ground i had to connect with earth all the time and it was very much a texture thing during that time of waiting for the surgery. And so one night I was outside and I had my hands in the dirt under this tree. And I was crying and I just spoke out loud. Why is this happening to me? Why am I only going to have surgery? Why? I mean, like, I don't understand if it's just this easy to have a surgery. Why have me go through it? Through it at all. And audibly, I heard it is not for you to understand, it's for you to believe. And in that moment, I had this, this feeling of peace wash over me. And I felt like I knew that everything was going to be okay. And that I didn't need to be questioning why I just needed to believe that it was going to be okay, no matter what. <laughs> and so um, at that point I chose to let go and not be so caught up in the why. And so I had the surgery, my healing went great and I'm here today and I can connect with people who are going through colon cancer as an experience or who are, you know, have their own questions as to why they're going through what they're going through. I know a couple of people actually who are young like me who actually have had experiences with colon cancer as well. Um, one of them is a really good friend and he, he was, he had stage, three colon cancer and it went away or you know he was free of disease mm -hmm. and then um probably a few months later he found out that it came back mm. so you know there are people in my life that um can you hear me there was a little bit of feedback oh no i can still hear you okay sorry um <clears throat> there are people in my life that have really blessed me to um, 
allow me to connect with them. Like their stories inspire me. But also I want to be here to be a support to other people as well. So if anybody has any questions, um, I currently am still in the colon field <laughs> temporarily. I, I work in the um, gastroenterology department for another doctor. So, um, you know, if anybody ever has any questions, you could private message me. Uh, if you know you have a colonoscopy coming up or you feel like something feels off, just trust your body because it's so easy for young people to, to just toss aside the idea that something's really wrong. We downplay our, ourself a lot. We downplay mm -hmm. what's going on in our body and especially black people. Black people downplay, <laughs> you know, I don't know about any other cultures, but in the African-American community, we can downplay our symptoms a lot. Oh, and, white people do it too. Yeah. <laughs> white people do it too. Okay, so, so everybody does it. Everybody does it. <laughs> You're talking to somebody who I personally have had five colonoscopies. Mm-hmm. And all of them came back perfectly clear, but each time I was like, really? We, we really need to go there? I, I know there's blood, but do we really need to go there? You know, mm -hmm. we're not that bad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. It, it we all do it. Yeah, well, that's it. That's the story. That's how that all went down. So I know you talked about like some of the, you know, fears that you had through it. What was the absolute scariest moment? When I wasn't sure if I was going to have to um, go through chemo, I was waiting on the staging and they told me that it was stage one and it had been super close to the vascular or like the vascular portion of my lymph nodes. Had it gotten there, it would have, been stage two, but um, but that waiting was the scary part. But also, or and also, the scary part was after, because the doctors don't tell you about the anxiety that comes after you've had surgery. They don't tell you they don't explain to you that you could have survivor's guilt. They don't explain to you that, you know, you could be paranoid that the cancer is gonna come back somewhere else. You know, so for a while, I would be in the shower checking my breasts, checking my molds, checking like, you know, oh, this, this pain in my arm has been here for two weeks and there's no bruise, what's, you know, what's wrong, you know? Um, for a moment, I thought I had like something going on with my ovaries. Like it gets in your psyche and it can really affect you. And if you don't have um, somebody to talk to about it, it can really drive you insane. And also the feeling of guilt of talking about it. Because for a little bit, I felt like, okay, everybody was allowing me to talk about this because it had just happened. But after a year, I still wanted to talk about it. And I wasn't sure if they were in a space to allow me to talk about it, you know, or were they like, oh, come on. Like it was, it was only stage one, like get over it, you know, like you're fine now, get over it. But I wasn't fine emotionally right. i wasn't fine mentally you know and so the doctors don't tell patients that that can happen and that is a, a likely a thing that happens more often than not i'm not sure with other cancers i would imagine that it's the same kind of situation but um i do know that there were several groups that i joined and that was a common theme. So I wasn't alone. Now I, so I, I went through a scare of finding a lump in my breast mm -hmm. and, you know, had to deal with the waiting game of waiting for my 
appointment for the wonderful, wonderful mammogram that we all so wonderfully love. For me, like my coping mechanism was I made very morbid jokes. Like I have a morbid sense of humor to begin with. So like I made very morbid jokes, but that's how I coped with it. Mm -hmm. What was your coping mechanism? <sighs> um, it sounds really, really strange to say it out loud, but sand. I had a sandbox that a friend made me and I was constantly rubbing the sand. Um, I would run my hands along the walls of the, the clinic I, in the hallway, the clinic that I worked with, they had very mm -hmm. textured walls. And I would run my hand along the walls. Um, I was just constantly touching gritty or not even gritty, but like, uh, that's Sandy, the, the, I don't know the how to texture. Describe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it, but that Sandy texture, I was constantly touching it. Um, so that got me through. Um, also just in the, in the months and the years after, having a safe space to talk about it, you know, not, not feeling isolated with my thoughts, but making sure that whoever I talked to about it knew that I still had these emotions and that I felt safe enough to talk to them about what I was still feeling. Well, I'm, I'm so thankful that you came on here and shared this, um, you know, your experience with the world on this platform. I, there were a couple of moments where I almost cried, not even going to lie. Like I've got tears in my eyes that I'm trying not to let stream down my face, but I'm just, I'm so touched that you were willing to share all of this with us. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. I do me. have, I'm sorry. I, I said thank you for that. giving me the platform. Of course, of course. I do have one final question for you. Has mm -hmm. nothing to do with what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In your entire life, what is the most inspiring thing that somebody has ever said to you? That's such a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, <clears throat> I have, I had an experience when I used to work at the VA medical center and there was a veteran who I, I liked to approach my experience working with the vets um, as like, I wanted to uh, make, have an impact on their day, period. A positive impact. Not everybody had that approach. Unfortunately, the people I worked with at the time didn't have that approach. And this one veteran, he said to me, you shifted my atmosphere. And that has stuck with me for years. And I had it on my fridge for the longest. <laughs> I will probably remember it till I'm 99 years old if I live that long. Um, but yeah, he said I shifted his atmosphere. And so I, I just make that my priority on a day-to-day -day basis with anybody that I come into contact with that, um, you know, I make an impact on their day in some way. I absolutely love that. With your permission, I'm not gonna promise when, but at some <laughs> point I would like to make a slide of that to put on the page. Of course. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for being on my show. Um, I can't wait to have you on the upcoming podcast yeah. next month. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be so much fun. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead and call it a night tonight. Um, if you guys, if you are enjoying this podcast, if you are moved by the stories that my guests have shared, if they're touching you and making you feel some sort of way, please consider supporting this uh, per podcast. Just go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life.
I hope you all have an amazing evening and I will be back tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>